Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to the press conference of the Military Committee Conference. First, the chairman of the NATO Military Committee, General Peter Pavel, will update you on the discussions that took place during the conference. After that, General Hulusi Akar, Chief of the General Staff of Turkish Armed Forces, will deliver his statement. After the statements, there will be an opportunity for questions and answers. Sir. Yeah, excuse me once again. And so I will now highlight, uh, highlight uh, the uh, major points uh, from uh, uh, our conference today in Istanbul. Uh, opening today's meeting, uh, we have uh, paid uh, the tributes, uh, tribute to uh, all our fallen uh, soldiers in operations uh, all around the world. Uh, we also uh, uh, paid uh, the tribute uh, to uh, uh, all the nations uh, who uh, participate in uh, all uh, our operations uh, around the world. We started uh, our deliberations uh, with a briefing uh, by uh, Turkey on regional security with a focus on NATO's southern flank and terrorism. Uh, terrorism poses a direct threat uh, to the security of NATO and uh, to international stability and prosperity more broadly and will remain a threat uh, to force, uh, for foreseeable future. The security of the alliance is indivisible and uh, we stand in solidarity against terrorism of any kind, its root causes uh, and uh, its wider consequences. In this first session, the NATO Chiefs of Defense uh, took uh, stock uh, of progress uh, in the implementation of readiness action plan adopted in Wales. The REP uh, is on track and on time. The conditions are set uh, for uh, the REP uh, to be delivered in time for Warsaw Summit. The Chiefs of Defense also stressed the need uh, to ensure that NATO forces and equipment can move rapidly across the alliance, as NATO's uh, greatest responsibility is to protect uh, and defend our allies, the 28 member states against any threat. NATO uh, continues to adapt and uh, respond to the challenges in both eastern and southern flanks, keeping all countries safe. In the second session of the day, the Chiefs of Defense focused on NATO's future posture uh, and uh, NATO's long-term strategy and adaptation. The Chiefs of Defense em emphasized the need to ensure a NATO uh, command structure remains robust, agile, and able uh, to counter any threat or challenge. We discussed the necessity for NATO uh, forces to maintain an adequate readiness and uh, coherence uh, needed to conduct NATO's full range of missions including aggression against NATO allies and defending NATO territory. The aim is to have the right forces in the right place and at the right time. During the resolute support session, the Chiefs of Defense reiterated their commitment to the mission and their confidence in the Afghan Defense Forces, who continue to rise to the challenge of protecting their own population. Resolute support is still our largest mission and it shows our determin determination to preserve the gains we have achieved together with the Afghans. NATO's uh, presence uh, post-resolute support also uh, featured uh, in our deliberations. The Chiefs of Defense underlined uh, that a successful transition from resolute support into the civilian-led presence uh, needs uh, to be condition-based. In the Western Balkan session, NATO Chief of Defense uh, received uh, a briefing uh, by uh, Greece, which served as the basis for our discussion on uh, ways of enhancing NATO's partnerships in this strategically important region. We stressed our continued commitment to regional stability, including through K-Force presence, uh, cooperation, and Euro-Atlantic integration. Finally, the Chiefs of Defense uh, have uh, elected the next Director General of the International Military Staff. Uh, he elected was uh, uh, Dutch General Jan Brooks, and he will take uh, his position uh, next summer. In sum, it has been a very productive meeting, and we look forward to uh, presenting the conclusions of our discussion to the NATO Defense Ministers uh, next month. In conclusion, uh, uh, let me uh, thank to General Akar 
for hosting this military co committee conference in Istanbul. Turkey is a strong ally and committed ally. Uh, we have uh, already appreciated the generosity of uh, your people and uh, the chance uh, to uh, discover Istanbul. Uh, thank you for your hospitality, and I will pass the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turkey. Sorry. Meanwhile, in the toast, the uh, distinguished members of the media, also a great pleasure for us. Thank you for coming. First, I will say a few words in English, in Turkish, for the members of the uh, national press. Sorry for the other media. Distinguished members of the press. Before I pass on to NATO issues, I would like to draw your attention to one particular topic. As you all know, our security forces are shoulder to shoulder fighting against terrorism in and out of our country in a resolute manner. Uh, from our Mehmet's Jonis to the highest ranking officers, Turkish armed forces will continue fulfilling its and commitments, its tasks with great sacrifice, heroism, and perseverance night and day, and under all weather conditions on all terrains, and will continue to do so. Upon this occasion, I would like to express that uh, may God rest the souls of those who have fallen during our fight against terrorism, soldiers, police officers, village guards, and our innocent citizens, and I hope that our brave veterans get well soon. Distinguished members of the press, uh, military committee conferences are organized every year in a NATO member country and is now being held in our country as previously planned. During this uh, conference, NATO's support to Turkey's fight against terrorism has once more been reiterated. Gentlemen, we appreciate allies solidarity and full support for our fight against terrorism. I personally believe that today's fruitful discussions have once again proved that NATO is committed to adapt itself to deal with emerging risks and threats. Today, NATO has been facing serious challenges emanating from the southern and eastern flanks. In the eastern flank, the instability in Ukraine adversely affects the regional and global security. As for the southern flank, crises in Iraq and Syria have become chaotic. Turkey is currently hosting more than 2 million Syrians and Iraqis and has spent more than $6 billion. The refugee problem is constantly escalating and has adverse implications not just for the uh, region but also for the whole world. Furthermore, Daesh, PKK and PYD terrorist organizations have been posing a great threat to the security in the region. Ladies and gentlemen, emerging threats in NATO's eastern and southern flanks demand resolve and solidarity of the Allies more than ever. Through today's discussions, we have advanced our understanding of the challenges and opportunities lying ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. I will now ask if there are any questions from the press corps. If you could please state your name and your media affiliation when asking your question. Uh, yes, please, the gentleman in grey. Good evening, sirs. My name is Sorav Roy, and I'm from TRT World. Um, I was just trying to uh, figure out uh, from you, sir, if uh, Turkey is trying to ask for more support from NATO uh, to create the 109-kilometer safe zone along its border with Syria, is there a concerted plan for NATO to help Turkey in driving out ISIS from the region and form the safe zone? Uh, 
As you know, the, from the very beginning, you know, we are in very close uh, coordination, cooperation with NATO and the NATO authorities. And uh, as they did so far, you know, they always you know, they are emphasizing they support while we were uh, fighting against the terrorist activities and the uh, border security. Again, you know, within these uh, conferences, uh, as a conference, uh, as you know, the whole you know, the military committee during the discussions, and uh, more than that, you know, within the bilateral discussions, and they, we got you know, the similar, similar uh, 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 intentions. But uh, as you know, you know, the, within this, you know, the uh, uh, within these efforts, uh, there is no, you know, the NATO plan, you know, the whole plan against you know, the uh, including the, these activities. Okay. Thank you. Do we have another question, uh, gentleman over there? Yes, please. From uh, Xinhua News Agency, uh, what about the new action plan, or do you have any uh, uh, action towards the uh, Russian in, uh, involvement uh, in Russia, uh, in uh, Syria, uh, Syria and uh, Ukraine? We should uh, we shouldn't probably mix. Uh, uh, the uh, readiness action plan and uh, Russian uh, deployment to Syria because uh, these are two distinct uh, distinct things. Uh, readiness action plan was initiated in Wales uh, due to Russian events uh, in uh, Ukraine. And uh, it was uh, created uh, as a reaction to need for assurance uh, for uh, Eastern uh, uh, European countries, members of NATO, who felt uh, threatened uh, by uh, Russian unpredictable behavior uh, close to their borders. So uh, uh, this uh, plan uh, consists of two major sets of measures. One set is uh, uh, our assurance measures uh, uh, aimed at assuring local population that NATO is ready and willing to assist uh, if necessary. The other part uh, are uh, adaptation measures which uh, have in mind the uh, long-term adaptation uh, of NATO to a uh, new security environment. Uh, in terms of uh, Russian uh, military uh, deployment uh, to Syria, uh, NATO is, uh, of course, observing very carefully uh, the development. But uh, at the point, uh, NATO as an institution is not uh, involved in uh, uh, anti-ISIL coalition, so uh, uh, there is no uh, measure uh, taken by NATO uh, to uh, this uh, new development. I think we will have to wait uh, what will be a concrete uh, intention of uh, Russia in the region. Uh, yes, lady in the front row, please. Uh, Elo Sezan, Haber Turk. My question is to Mr. Pavel. Uh, there is an informal information that ISOS has capacity to use chemical weapons. Do you have any uh, information about this matter? There are uh, some reports uh, about indications uh, of uh, use of uh, chemical weapons uh, provided uh, through different sources, including uh, open sources uh, through media and uh, organizations presented, uh, humanitarian organizations presented in Syria. Uh, these are not confirmed, and at this point, uh, we cannot uh, take uh, any measure. Uh, of course, uh, as uh, with the case of uh, other events in the region, uh, we are uh, monitoring the situation. Uh, we have, uh, as you probably know, uh, the Center of Excellence for uh, Chemical, Radiological, and Biological Weapons. Uh, they are uh, assessing uh, possible uh, impacts of such a use once confirmed. Uh, so that uh, NATO is uh, ready and can offer uh, adequate solutions. Gentlemen in the back, behind the camera. Ben gelir kurmay başkanım, ses unutmamak istiyorum. Atıl Falah, Can Haber Ajansı. My question is as follows. Uh, what about the course of action of Daesh? And patriots uh, that are deployed for defense capabilities, are they going to be again deployed? Uh, in English. 
It's as you wish, it's being translated. So okay. whichever language you Thank prefer, you. sir. From the very beginning, we are fighting against the every kind of the terrorist organizations, regardless of who they are, what they are doing. And then the, similarly, you know, the, we are doing the same you know, against you know, the Daesh. So far, we did it the, within you know, the border security issues. But additionally, you know, the, recently, we participated in the coalition forces and the, uh, we opened the, our you know, the air space and the air bases as well. Now we are acting, we are operating you know, with you know, the uh, coalition against them. And the, as we did you know, from the very beginning, of the, we continue without making you know, any change you know, within the fundamental you know, the policy of Turkey. We continue to fight against you know, every kind of the terrorist organizations. Anlaşılmadı. Başkanım. Oh, sorry. Yes. The, uh, yes. The, uh, so far, you know, the, you know, the allied countries made good contribution and then we had support you know, the, to show you know, the solidarity between the, uh, Turkey and NATO. And then, the, uh, however, you know, there will be uh, some change you know, within the upcoming months. But right after that, also, you know, we are in keeping the contact with our you know, the allied countries. So the, uh, depending on the, uh, how to say, the uh, negotiations and the uh, context, and the, we will, uh, they will support us you know, in any way, you know, the, uh, you know, the air defense, missile defense. Thank you. We will take another question. Gentlemen over there, please. Giuseppe Mancini, Agenzia Nova. Uh, do you have any plan of land operation in northern Iraq against the PKK? The, again, you know, the, uh, we are you know, the fighting the, against terrorist organizations for the security uh, of the, our, you know, the country and the nations. And then the, uh, we are you know, the, taking the necessary precautions depending on the conditions. So the, uh, uh, we are you know, the monitoring the situation and the, for the uh, safe and secure environment for our country, we are you know, the carrying out the necessary actions. We will take a last question. Sir, you've already, you have an, an additional question to what you've already asked. Yes. Uh, sir, you mentioned that, uh, that you've provided, I mean, Turkey has opened up the Incirlik air base to NATO forces. Um, would we be expecting Turkey to open up more bases in the future as well? At the moment, you are no. Thanks. I would like to thank the media for their presence. The generals will now depart, and I'm going to stay behind should you have any additional questions or need for clarification. Thank you very much again for coming to this press conference.